Thank you. Let's see if I get this to work. Yeah, so this is uh, work uh, that's been done together with my colleague, uh, Jon Magne Ågård. So now we're back <laughs> on the geo model level. So what we um, want to do is extract trends. And the trends, they help uh, describe the large scale reservoir characteristics. It could help with the problems the previous speaker found with this geo model. Um, you can have both lateral trends and depositional trends. And the analysis of these trends can be quite time consuming, especially if you have tens of zones, or not maybe 10 uh, phases. <coughs> Going through all of that takes a lot of time. <coughs> One way of extracting those trends is uh, linear regression. Uh, and we want to see if we can do something with machine learning here to uh, speed up this time. And how does it compare when we uh, look at it together with uh, linear regression, or I should say multilinear regression in this case. So the outline of the presentation is, uh, I'll first go through the data we used, a uh, bit on the algorithm, then we'll look at the results and come to some form of summary. <coughs> we had a bit of trouble getting the data that we wanted. Uh, we ended up with uh, using Gullfox. In the zones we looked at, we had 151 wells uh, all in all. We used five zones, where each of them had between 50 and 120 wells available in each of them. Uh, and the average cell thickness here is two meters, so that's our vertical resolution. And just for the fun of it, we wanted to see if we could get, get something out of a uh, good fact seismic and the amplitude. Can machine learning do something amazing here? Uh, I'll just say no. <laughs> that was scrapped pretty fast. Uh, but to have something uh, to describe the spatial distribution here, uh, we looked at Maui in the Taranaki Basin in New Zealand. Downside here is we only had five wells. Uh, and the log we used uh, was a synthetic one, but we had acoustic impedance. If you ever see AI later in this presentation, it's not artificial intelligence, it is acoustic impedance. So the algorithm we used uh, is an ANN, artificial neural network. Uh, the structure and back propagation algorithm we have in C++. We ended up using SoftSign for our activation function. We did spend quite a lot of time trying the different activation functions, but this one by far gave us the best result. Uh, we have root mean squared error. We use RMS pop for uh, mini batch training. Uh, the network architecture is restricted to equal sized hidden layers. And the training and verification uh, data we were grouped according to the K fold cross validation ontology. Uh, tried different uh, numbers here, but uh, in we'll see in a second what we used in good facts. The output from the algorithm uh, was in 3D, so grid parameters. We got a result from uh, one epoch, or the one iteration, uh, which was the best one. Then we have the optimum epochs, so I, we gathered the best uh, results from the different validation groups, merged them together and did the average. And also for comparison, uh, we have the output from the multilinear regression. So the input settings for good bugs. Soft sign activation, as I mentioned. Uh, linear activation function for output layer. We only had three hidden layers and three neurons in each layer. Given the amount of data we had, uh, increasing this number turned out to be uh, too many degrees of freedom. The uh, result ended up all over the place. Uh, we found the best result too fast, and then the errors amounted up pretty fast. We did 10 cross-validation groups with a mini-batch size 128. So what we wanted to train were, was for porosity using depth information. How we uh, validated our results uh, while running is through these graphs you see inside here. The green one is the multilinear regression, flat as expected. Uh, the red one is from one iteration or epoch. And the purple or violet, we didn't really figure out which one of it is. It's either purple or violet. Uh, was the best epoch. And we have the training error in black. So what we 
want to see here is this separation between linear, multilinear regression and the machine learning outputs. Uh, and in this case, we see it, we are better, and roughly 5% better than linear regression. We'll just jump to the next one here. Uh, so what we see here is the two, two logs. Uh, both are from the same well, exactly the same spot. Colors are a bit off. The bars are the porosity. The left one we used for training, the right one uh, we left out together with uh, nine other wells, so roughly 10%, to check our prediction. The black dots are the multilinear regression results, and the green, no, the blue dots are the, uh, the machine learning results. And as you can see, when we trained, uh, we don't see a big separation, there are tiny bits. This log doesn't have much variation in depth though. When we predicted, so we didn't use it for training at all. Uh, it's not a big difference. So, does this really help us in any way? Will machine learning do something? If we look at some other wells with a bit more variation, again, the blue is machine learning, the black is uh, multilinear regression. Remember, this is a, we're trying to create trends here. We, we don't want to follow the data precisely. So we want to capture the large scale features. And we do that uh, for both wells. Again, they're quite similar, but the machine learning one managed to capture this interval where you see the porosity sinking down. <coughs> that was uh, something we hope to find. And we also see that we avoid overfitting, at least when we look at it in this detail. <coughs> yeah, so now we looked at a couple of single walls. Let, this is all the input data in the scatter plot where we have depth uh, in the y-axis, the porosity in uh, x-axis. And we're sampling the result from our prediction back into the well data to compare. So for multilinear regression, we see that we do capture the trend down here. But there is, we can actually see there is a trend of increasing porosity in the top. Uh, surprisingly enough, linear regression doesn't capture much of the variation, but uh, overall it's not too bad. You can see that we have some data up here that's 30%. We, We'll see the effect of that uh, in a few slides. Looking at um, the output from one iteration, or the best iteration of machine learning, we capture better the trend in top and top and on bottom. So what's the difference when we compare it with the optimum? We gather the best iteration and uh, average it. So the interval, has tightened in. It's slightly less steep uh, on the top. And from the top ones, you see that it's gone from 20% to 25%. So it's moving towards what we saw linear regression. But what does it really mean when we come to 3D? So just for an overview, this is the, the grid, the reservoir. Uh, the, all the dots you see scattered over uh, the map here is our well data, or the location of the well data. Uh, we have a lot of information in the middle, and not so much on the flanks. So the output in 3D here, left one, we have machine learning, and on the right, we have from multilinear regression. Immediately you see some of the really red dots here. These are the high points in the grid that got this 30% uh, porosity point in. So it looks like some kind of bullseye effect and it doesn't look really uh, geological. While on the machine learning, you see a much smoother trend. Uh, we capture a lot similar, but still it's 
better, especially when you look at the sides and the flanks. Given the multilinear regression, this looks absolutely fantastic. Where is there no wells here? Except that there might not be oil, but we can't check it. So looking at this in depth, uh, it's not very obvious other than the flanks where we see the biggest difference. Also the distribution is very is different when you look at the middle here. But I'm assuming that's very hard for you guys to see. So just trust me. But it's subtle. But I, okay, so we s I showed you one example. It was in the target zone. We saw that machine learning gave us something, but it will always give us something. And this is an example where it doesn't give us much. Uh, and by using the um, error prediction that you saw in the graphs I showed earlier, we caught that we only got roughly 1% difference. But in this case, you don't really need to run machine learning. It's enough with linear regression. But it's still important to know your data. And you get some strange effects sometimes, especially where we have little data like down here. Uh, and this might look like overfitting. Um, so you, if we have a look at that. You, so this is the area we're looking at. Linear regression in green and the uh, machine learning in uh, red. When we look at the detail on the well, we don't see much overfitting. It's actually following the trend better than the linear regression. So we're ruling out overfitting here. And then one more small success story. <coughs> So what we've seen from Gulfax using only uh, well data, we do manage to extract more from the data. The output is uh, fairly um, smooth, but it does give us more than linear regression. And it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot faster than doing this all manually. Running this each zone uh, on my laptop was 10 to 20 seconds. Um, so the MAUI field, we didn't spend as much time on this uh, because we have less wells, less data, uh, and <coughs> the data we have was clustered down here, and up one well here on the top, <coughs> and it's shown on the background uh, of an uh, acoustic impedance uh, cube. So we were hoping that this spatial information together with uh, the well logs would give us more information. And you see the acoustic impedance here, same uh, depth as the output from machine learning, giving us a very different trend, uh, not smooth as we saw from uh, Google Fox. A lot of more details emerge. Uh, another example is comparing with the multilinear regression. And you see it's very different. And this is so different that we really don't understand why yet. Uh, it needs to be looked into. Jumping up the slide, we see we have some uh, smaller uh, total organic carbon synthetic data coming in from the top. When playing through all of these layers, you could imagine how the um, sea level had gone back and forth. And you can see the geology coming up and down. But uh, it's still just promising, as we can't verify it yet. The trends uh, we took out uh, was from multilinear regression, capturing nicely the overall trend. If we go into the machine learning part, we see that we don't fit the smaller one here, uh, which is what we want. We do capture these in the middle. Uh, and there are some attempts of going out here in the bottom. First look, it looks really good. 
Uh, second thought is, are we overfitting? And we do suspect that we are overfitting here. Uh, and the problem here is the amount of well data we have in, so we have very little data. I'm closing in. So to summarize this, uh, we've seen that from using machine learning, we can extract more of the trends uh, from the data than we did with multilinear regression. Using only wells, we have a smooth output. Uh, combining it with spatial data um, seems promising. We saw more details emerge from the data that we had. And I'm saying overfitting was not observed, question mark. Uh, and that's true for uh, Google Plugs, we think, from what we uh, have seen. It's a bit more skeptical on the last example, uh, so that needs more work. The runtime, uh, as I said, 10 seconds to a couple of minutes when you introduce the 3D data, and that's on a laptop. What we spent most time on was actually defining the network, figuring out what worked, and uh, will those settings work on uh, other data. And to check that, we need data. And with that, I conclude.